Hello, welcome to the Monday, November 16th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. To start out with, a couple of uh, quick diaries from this weekend. First off, all Diddy yet again updated Oli Dump, the tool that he maintains that allows you to analyze various office documents. And one thing that he has run into and talked about quite a bit recently is malicious documents where actually anti-malware has removed macros. So he introduced a new indicator to let you know that a macro has been removed from a particular document. And Xavier took a quick look at a sample that he found on Virus Total that's actually based on a fairly old piece of JavaScript malware back from 2018. But thanks to some not really all that complex but innovative new obfuscation technique, has gotten a new lease on life by again being able to evade anti malware. What it does here is pretty easily just take Unicode codes and then with a simple math formula transform the character code to an ASCII code that then translates into the malicious script. And the release of macOS Big Sur and a number of other new software packages such by Apple on Thursday caused an interesting issue for macOS users trying to launch software. Many macOS users reported that it was quite slow to start the software on Thursday evening. And I remember myself sort of running into this a little bit, but uh, kind of shrugging it off as well. Uh, maybe my system is doing a little bit uh, too much uh, that a moment and didn't really have the time to track it down. But apparently what happened was that Apple's OCSP service was overloaded. OCSP stands for the Online Certificate Status Protocol and it's a service used to verify if a particular certificate is still valid. This is also heavily used for a TLS, but the basic idea is that before you trust a certain certificate, you connect to the issuing authorities OCSP service and check if the certificate is still good. Now, before OCSP, there was something called a certificate revocation list, uh, which is similar where certificate authorities were distributing lists of revoked certificates, but that didn't really scale well. And with OCSP, the service can not just tell you that certificate was revoked, it can also tell you if a certificate was never issued. But of course, newer versions of Mac OS do require that software is digitally signed and before the software is launched, the certificate that was used to sign the software is verified via OCSP. And you see this in other operating systems as well. Now, the problem, of course, is what happens if the service does not respond? And that's actually not that uncommon in particular for TLS. And the result here is, well, in most cases, we have a soft fail, which means if the service can't be contacted, the certificate is assumed to be legit. On Thursday, the problem was not that the service was down, the service was just very slowly in responding. And as a result, it just took a long time to launch software because it took a long time for the certificate to be validated. Now, one quick fix here was to basically just uh, block any request to the Apple OCSP service. And you can do that very simply by just essentially setting up a host entry to nothing for the particular OCSP host. But uh, that of course has the danger that if you don't remove uh, this block, then the operating system will no longer verify these certificates. So tricky issue and uh, some trick to keep in your pockets in case uh, this happens again. This could also happen to others, not just Apple. OCSP is very widely used in other operating systems as well. And like I said, uh, for TLS connections from browsers. 
Now for TLS, we do have another option called OCSP stapling, where the web server actually goes out and gets an OCSP assertion that's valid for a short amount of time and delivers that as part of the certificate. That option, of course, doesn't work for digitally signed software. And to round out this weekend, we do have yet another attack against SGX, uh, the uh, secure guard extension that is present in most uh, current Intel processors. Now, what this new attack tries to do is uh, something similar uh, to what has been done in software in the past by essentially slightly changing the voltage uh, that the CPU is running on, introducing uh, failures as a result, and then learning uh, from these failures about uh, secrets stored in SGX. Uh, this new technique, well, uh, does this in hardware by essentially injecting messages into the serial voltage identification bus or SVIB uh, to, that regulates uh, the CPU voltages. So it essentially bypasses some of the software protections that Intel implemented against some of uh, the older software-based attacks. Wouldn't really see this as a huge threat. Like I said, it does require physical access. Someone has to actually connect a special board to the computer in order to inject these messages. But then again, uh, that's sort of uh, what SGX was supposed to be designed for uh, to protect secrets from attackers that have physical access to a system. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening. Talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.